tomato potato, tomato potato. We are cooking get with gas here on the Bro Four Squad podcast. Welcome back, guys. I am your host Jeff Hornacek. With me today is the mad scientist Brian Banner. We're doing another one of our movie commentaries. We love doing these. We love hearing your guys' comments on it. Today we are doing one of the shittiest movies ever because it's around the holidays and we just need to put ourselves in check. There's too much joy going around. We are doing the Tim Story directed, the original, the 2005 movie, Fantastic Four and Banner. Before we dive in, Will we make it through an hour, 45 minutes of this movie? We made it through Batman and Robin. I don't know if we can make it through this. This is rough. But it, it's so good, though, it deserves a sequel. I really wish that we can see a movie with Rise of the Silver Surfer in it. Yeah, you talk about the Rise of the Silver Surfer more on this podcast than anyone on Earth should ever talk about anything. So for those of you out there who haven't listened to us before, thank you for joining in. Crack open a beer or get out some Crown Royal, which Banner is working on. Always. What we're going to do is watch the movie and just comment alongside how ridiculous it is throughout the the entire film, if I can loosely call it a film. So the best thing to do is just watch it along with us, and it's actually on Netflix as we're recording this, which is December 21st. So if you can get in before Netflix realizes that this is cruel and unusual punishment and the government makes them remove it, I would do that. But right now we have our videos paused at the four-second mark. Don't ask why we're at that mark, but if you want to get your It just there, happened. It was fate. Yeah, we're drunk, so that's why we're there. We're through four seconds of it and already regretting, like, can we go back? Is it Clearly we're drunk. We're about to watch Fantastic Four. <laughs> we're four seconds in and Tim's story has not fucked it all up yet. Um, so get your movie to the four second mark and then we'll just all sync up and press play in three, two, one, play. So this is, of course, a 20th century Fox, or a Fox movie with a Marvel property. Um... Obviously not done by Marvel Studios, hence part of the reason why it's absolute dog shit. Um, so I know this. I know we're talking about Fantastic Four, but in the new Marvel Studio films, do you like that they changed the the Marvel Studio entrance? You know, with the comic book flipping pages, they changed that to to reflect the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I know this is a Fox film, so it really doesn't apply, but they've already lost me in this movie. Yeah. Well, first off, it's weird because the Marvel logo turned blue. And I know it's to, like, fit in with the Fantastic Four, but no. Um, But, yeah, to the MCU one, I I think I do like it. I like how it kind of, like, lets you see, oh, this is, like, a much larger universe with all the other movies. But the comic panel uh, animation that they did was just so fucking cool previously. This is Eon Gruffled playing Dr. Reed Richards and of course Michael Chiklis from The Shield as Ben Grimm. I don't think either one of them really did that's the thing that's so weird about this like I don't think anybody did a bad job it just wasn't a good movie. I mean look at the cast you have though like Jessica Alba is great to look at but she can she can't act. And right. Michael Chiklis, while he was great on The Shield, like, what has his career become since this movie? Yon Gruffold, is he even alive? Like, what is this guy fucking doing? What's he doing right now? I don't know. I'm, I'm pulling up his IMDb. No, I'm pulling up his Wikipedia. I don't, I don't trust IMDb. I'll pull up his Let's IMDb see. and we'll go through the train wreck of whatever the fuck this is. He was, he was an officer in the movie Titanic. Yes. Kind of wish he was on the Titanic. He was in Bosses recently. Um, he was in The Jungle Book. I didn't know that. It was a voice role. In 2006, 16. Meet, meet Doctor Doom, and we know he's the villain because he's in Dark. Another thing that's like, and I know that Reed Richards is very far from a perfect husband in the comics, but in this movie, Eon Gruffold, um, obviously... Sue Storm is played by Jessica Alba, who is a complete smoke show. And the whole time he acts like she can't hold his attention, like she's not hot enough, which that's, in this is saying something, but that might be the most unrealistic thing in this movie. That someone would ignore Jessica Alba. (laughs) Yeah, I agree 100%. It's, 
In a movie and, and where again, I think he does he does a decent job of portraying who Reed Richards is in this in this show or in this movie, but again, maybe it was just bad casting is the fact that they, they cast Jessica Alba and you're like, no, nah, this just no. <laughs> like we can't even you, you, like nobody's gonna buy that. Here she is. And look, he's already bored, like, God damn it, why are you here? Yeah, but Ben Grimm's like, I'll get in on this. I don't give a fuck. No, it's not a problem. They already just... the acting is already getting bad, and I they haven't even they're not even freaks yet. Pardon the I just I, I'm gonna hold my disdain for the fact that this movie got a sequel to later on because I don't want to I don't want to subject our listeners to that kind of cruelty this early. But let's talk about the cast real quick. So you get a... Now, granted, this was 2005. The comic book genre had not had uh, The Dark Knight or Iron Man come to light. It's still very infancy. I mean, you have X-Men. I believe X2 came out in the same year. Yeah, that sounds right. If I'm not mistaken, in in 2005. But I'm saying... But other than that, what else do you have? Right. Hellboy? And so I think the cast that they got was about the best. I mean, there's no, like, big-name actors in this. Jessica Alba at the time might have been the biggest name. Now you look back and Chris Evans is, like, the one guy who got out of this movie alive. But, like, Julian McMahon is playing Victor Von Doom. Nowadays, that's a role that we would be talking about, like, maybe Matthew McConaughey considering, you know? Oh, my God. Don't even tease my dick with that right now. Matthew McConaughey is my boy. I I was uh, on, like, one of the forums. I don't know if it was IMDb. Where else? By the way, if you're on IMDb, check us out. Bro Force Squad is our handle. But and someone suggested McConaughey as Norman Osborn, which I think would be kind of cool. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean, he can't do any worse than any of the other Norman Osborns we've had. <laughs> I don't care. McConaughey's got to be in a superhero movie eventually. He'll sell out. Oh, he will. Okay, he does. He's done Fool's Gold and Sahara. And Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. And Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. He he will do a superhero movie in the next five years. I'll say, yeah, the next five years. Because we haven't, we haven't really got casting or anything for anything past that. So one can only hope that it's going to be Marvel just so, like, it doesn't ruin him. And right here we're seeing Sue Storm is basically telling him, like, yeah, you don't own this ass anymore, Reed. But yet she still wants it. You can tell. You can tell in her eyes. She's and again, Ben Grimm is like, "I'll give it to her." It's it's weird to see Chris Evans in this role. It really is. This is before he got all jacked and everything. This is back when he was like a weird, awkward. Like he looks like he he's like a Creed fan. Yeah, he was into like butt rock, which is what yeah. the subgenre that I've put Creed and Nickelback and those other types of bands in. <laughs> Fucking Nickelback. Again, though, like, I don't think he did a bad job in this movie. It just wasn't a good movie. How do you crash a flight simulator into a wall? How do you not crash a flight simulator into a wall? I guess that is the question, yeah. How fucking cool. Okay. If you had to be one of the four Fantastic Four, it's got to be Johnny Storm, right? Absolutely. He can fly and, like, he doesn't have to walk. Like, the thing would be the last one that I would ever want to be. I don't know. You're at least strong and, like, you can, like, just... Nobody's going to fuck with you when you're the thing. You have you have elastic arms as as Mr. Fantastic. That's not that cool. God, I really hate him as Johnny Storm. I don't hate her in that outfit, though. Like, if you're going to space, they don't let you dress you like this. I would like her better if that outfit was on the floor. See, this is the thing that, like, I understand this is not at all realistic, but, like, we're going to outer space and your suit has built-in cleavage on it. Yeah, we're going to outer space and we're going to wear a wetsuit. I mean, that's, that's essentially what we're wearing. I've seen pornos where they dress the astronaut women more conservatively, like Apollo Squirt Teen. 
Yeah, we're clearly watching different pornos. Yeah, I'm more into like the ones based off of movies. <sighs> and that's how you know it's a bad movie if we're talking about porn during the first what? Are we are we even five minutes into this? I don't yeah, we're like eight minutes in. So, All right. as we always do, guys, when you watch these movie commentaries, we like to throw a little bit of trivia in there. And as the painfully bad CGI is on screen, I'll throw <laughs> I'll throw one of my... I Literally, this is like an N64 game right now. I'll throw a first line at you having to do with this scene. Jessica Alba had a kidney infection during the filming and nearly fainted when she was with Julian McMahon in the space station scene, which I believe is right now. Yeah, it's, come, it's about to come up. So she's probably... And by the way, that... Pants. That's that's our new official trivia uh, sound effects. Normally, Matt Geiger uh, has a bell that he dings. Ding! Yeah, Geiger, unfortunately, or fortunately, actually, fortunately for him, is at a holidays festival fiesta party and uh, couldn't make it to us, but he's clearly enjoying himself way more than we are. He's with us in spirit. And Alex English, our other member, is actually seeing Rogue One, a Star Wars story, as we record. May the Force. I am one with the force, the force is with me. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. It's so fucking good. <laughs> I'm still sticking to my guns, though. Empire is better. I watched Empire last night, and it's still better. We're not talking about that tonight. We're watching Fantastic Four. Um, so apparently, Yoni... She looks a little pale here. I can see her, I can see her fainting. Yeah. Are they already trying to make her the invisible woman? hi oh. Um, hey. Yone Gruffold, who plays Reed Richards, apparently has an English accent, and according to IMDb's trivia, it was efforts to keep it an American accent were hampered by the fact that he would receive new script pages on a regular basis, forcing him to learn new lines in short notice. Kind of ironic that a movie directed by someone named Tim Story doesn't know what the fuck the script is for the film. Yeah, if, you're, if your last name is Story, you should at least know how to tell a story. Yeah. I also have here that Paul Walker was considered for the part of Johnny Storm. I actually think that would have been better, but... Mm, I think it would have been a wash. I don't think... I think as far as the action scenes and stuff like that, Paul Walker could have done a good job. I don't think he could have delivered the comic relief that Chris Evans is, is doing. It would have been kind of weird. Because Paul Walker takes everything seriously. Yeah. Like. Like, like, clearly, Chris Evans is like, well, I took this role, my career is over. Somehow, he was like, oh, I'm going to grow, I'm just going to take a bunch of steroids and I'll, I'll become Captain America later. It would have been really weird in, this is the same thing with Godzilla, I'll make this analogy here in a second, but in the movie Into the Blue, him and Jessica Alba are banging, like, the entire time. And oh, yes. They would have been brother and sister in this. In Gareth Edwards' movie Godzilla, Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson play a married couple... And then, of course, they are Quicksilver yep. and Scarlet Witch in Avengers Age of Ultron the next year. And mainly because what we're watching on screen, like, just doesn't matter. Either one of those, if either one of those hookups slash couples, brother, sister, whatever, had a baby, that'd be a gorgeous baby. Agreed. Now, because this movie's awful and we're watching it just to get drunk with you at home and laugh at it, I have not been paying attention. Why exactly are we in space again? Science. Mm, okay. Oh no! Now there's already an there's an anomaly. Something that there's would never anomaly. Happen. Why is why do computers always talk? Like my computer doesn't talk to me like that. Like hey, shit's fucked up. Mine does. I don't. That must be like yours. I don't know. Mm, weird. Look, we all know I'm a, a, a romantic. If anybody proposed to me in space, looking down at Earth. You have to say yes. Yeah. Right? Even if you don't want anything to do with them, you pretty yeah, much... Yeah, like, if you're just in it for the money, or, or even not in it for the money, like, it doesn't matter what you're in it for, you're in you're it. You're in it, and yeah. Yeah. Your ball's deep in this marriage now. Wait, so Doctor Doom is proposing to Sue Storm? Yeah. Didn't, are they even He's not Doctor Doom yet. He's just Victor right are, now. Are they even dating though? This seems like we're skipping maybe like a couple years of the process. Well, you got to remember we don't have the director's cut, kind of like uh, kind of like the DC movies. Yeah. Once you once we watch the, the director's cut, then it all makes sense. I'll let you do that one on your own. I'm busy that time that you want to watch that. Well, we're still you're still on the schedule to watch the director's cut of uh, the Daredevil movie, right? 
I've actually heard that one's good, as much as we like to shit on that. Yeah, I actually have heard that, too. Um, I have not had the pleasure, but I heard that one's good. The CGI is really bad. It was 2005, man. Yeah, I just watched A New Hope, and it looked better than this. <laughs> A New Hope was digitally remastered in 99. I think you're making my point for me. Yeah, I might be. That guy, uh, Julian McMahon, was on the show Nip Tuck. I never watched it, but it's about the Heard only other... great things. Yeah, it's about the only other acting job that he's had since this movie. So, going along with uh, Tim's story, just a little bit of uh, trivia here. He uh, directed that movie Ride Along. Recently, came out a couple years ago. Wow, that's rough. Yeah. Um, he also did Barbershop. Taxi in 2004, obviously Fantastic Four. He did the sequel in 2007, Rise of Silver Surfer. Uh, Hurricane Season, Ride Along, which they have slated Ride Along 2 and Ride Along 3. And this Ride is the guy two, they wanted to do fant- Like, I just don't... I don't know. I guess I understand it because this might not even be the shittiest movie he's directed. Well, obviously Honestly, the is. looking at this list that I'm looking at, it's probably a top five movie that he's directed. That's really sad. The movie could have just ended right here. I think a lot of people would have been okay with it. It might have made more sense. He's jacked. He actually he actually looks better in this than he does in like he looks healthy in this. Like as Captain America, he doesn't look healthy. He looks too big. Yeah. I actually I hate myself for saying this, and I know Geiger's going to hate me for saying this, but John he's actually pretty good as Johnny Storm. That's a good that that actually kind of makes me want to laugh. I don't want to give this yeah. movie any credit, but that's funny. Oh, it was funny. This is one of those movies that if you go into it thinking it's a comedy, it's not that bad. Is it supposed to be, though? I don't think so. No. Do you have your Let's go back to our on? good old friend Wikipedia. It's just a superhero-based uh, movie. Wow, does she have enough flowers? Jeez. The scene on the bridge took about five weeks to shoot, according to IMDb, and that's just five weeks of everyone's life wasted, really. Is that the one where she gets naked? I thought that was the scene we just saw, but if she gets naked, in, then maybe can we just skip to that? Oh, that actually might be in the second one, in Rise of the Silver Surfer. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Why does she get, like, a queen bed? Like, you're in the hospital. You don't need that big of a fucking bed. Is she a queen bee? All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Victor Von Doom, I, I think, leads the movie in, like, smarmy half smirks while he sh- contorts his body back and forth. I don't get why he... He doesn't really have, like, a European accent, and he's supposed to be from Latveria. Like, I feel like he should have... Yeah. At least, like, reading the comics and everything, like, being from Latveria, being from that area, I always thought he should have, like, a like a Baltic kind of accent. Did you ever want to see or think that we were going to see Boom Doombots? Is that Maria Menounos? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I did not realize that she was in this movie. I don't know if Good she for her. Do you know her and Macaulay Culkin have been dating for, like, ever? I thought Macaulay Culkin was dating Mila Kunis until she got married for, like, seven or eight years. I think they dated, like, him and, I think, him and Maria uh, Menounos dated, they kind of had a little little thing, and they broke up, and he date, she dated Mila Kunis for a while, but then they broke up, and he went back to 
uh, Menounes. And they've been together for like a long time. Good for him. Yeah. Good for her. I hear that he uh, he has good drugs too. I'm sure. Yeah. Did you see his mugshot. That was that was around the same time, maybe oh five. I think oh two maybe. That Maria Menounos is an actress. Hey, look! Every time I go to see a movie and she does the Cinemark whatever before yeah. the movie starts, she kills it. I mean, she was born for that role. She was been she groomed for that role forever. But going back to going back to the movie, so, uh, real quick. I always imagine Doom having like a kind of a European Baltic accent, mm-hmm. and he does not in this, and, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Real quick on Maria Menounos' character, just to show how misogynistic this movie is, her she is listed as playing sexy nurse. Like you, she can't even just be. And they're nurse. not lying. No, it's not untrue. I'll give you that. But. Yeah, in, in the second one, which obviously we will try to avoid bringing up as often as possible for those that have PTSD, but it, he's, like, on that shipping freighter, and he, like, breaks out of it. Spoilers. Um, is, is that on its way to or in Latveria? I feel like it was in the sequel. I think it was implied. To be honest with you, I've seen the movie, like, twice because it's that bad. Yeah. And you know, you know my my theory, Brian Adams. Oh, she's song. still in this. Wow. Are they like a thing? I don't know if it's like exclusive, but like, is any of this necessary in the movie? Do you believe that that's actually Manunos? Absolutely. She does her own stunts. We know that. And there is no way that that is Chris Evans. Definitely not. Because he's he's kind of a little bitch. Although he did say woohoo. Yeah, he probably had to come back in a few times to get the right woohoo down. That because Tim Story is a perfectionist. Clearly. This scene reminds me of the opening scene in the Power Rangers when they skydive in and they have like their respective colors on because of how ridiculously bright pink her coat is. It also reminds me of um, Johnny Tsunami, the Disney Channel original movie. I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, Matt Geiger would be cra- driven crazy by this because he likes a good slow cook, but in an origin movie, they pretty much have their powers, and how far in are we, like 15 minutes? Um, we're at 123, we were at... Or 124, so we were at 45. In. We're about 20 minutes in. Yeah. That's really soon. Like, that's incredible. Yeah, that soon. is really, really fast. And he gets some. Well, wow. that's all you have to yeah. do, I guess. Does it surprise you, though? Hate to keep Vic waiting. Oh, he's setting him up at the Continental Breakfast. I'm not gonna lie. I actually forgot how, like, he he gets all fucked up and shit. Yeah, I just know his face is like split open on the side, yeah. and this fucking nerd with a Palm Pilot is just like. Up his ass the entire movie. <laughs> With a palm pilot. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, check the Blackberry. Remember when people thought the palm pilot, like, yo, this thing is gonna be the shit. This like, is the, the next big thing, yeah. I don't think you can buy enough stock in palm pilot right now, guys. That guy just asked, you could have any other woman, why... Sue, uh, excuse you, it's Jessica Alba. Check yourself. Yeah, dude, have you seen chicks before? A little heartburn here. Yeah, it's just some bad shrimp. No big deal. 
And they think he's just trying to set them up. I will say, and I know we've talked about this, and, and we can't avoid – we've avoided it long enough. The remake, uh, the 2015 remake of Fantastic Four, how they got their powers, their origin, so fucking much better than this one. Yeah, actually, like, there was – for everything wrong with the third act in that movie, I actually thought the first act was really good. And the job I, I, directed The one. first 45 minutes of that movie were fantastic. And then, then it went drastically downhill. I think that as an average, this movie's a little bit better. But that's how bad that last act in that movie was. But if we go off of just origin stories, not origin movies, just this is how they got their powers and we leave it at that, the remake might be one of the best. Yeah, I mean, the second act is like cut in half in the middle with that one year later, which... Like, literally, I remember saying out loud when it happened, what? It's just like yeah. the most out of place thing. And, it, and, and at I'm that not point, a big Miles Teller fan. Um, you know who is? Miles Teller. Yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of his, but I actually liked him in that movie. I didn't think he was going to be a good Reed Richards, but he, he pulled it off. I'll, I'll, I, I will give credit when credit is due. Yeah, I did. I'll be honest. When they first cast him, I was like, I do not see this dude as Reed Richards. But he played him differently. I don't know. That whole movie is just so weird. It's hard for me to. It is. I I'm actually kind of surprised that somehow Fox didn't greenlight a sequel to it. Oh my gosh, she's gone. They still might. I could see them doing like the really, uh, like immature thing to like put put it in production to keep the rights and never actually make it. So I yeah, I could, I could really see that too. We've talked about whose powers you would want the most. I don't even think it's close, right? Like being able to stretch is kind of cool, but no, I I think he's four on my list. To be honest with you, I mean, Human Torch, you, you're going to be the Human Torch, right? Like, I think that's a clear number one. By the way, I think this is the fourth scene where we have Victor Von Doom, like stoically looking away from the camera at a 45 degree angle and like stroking his chin it's 43 degrees thank you very much i'll beg your pardon johnny the thing with with johnny storm is he always has like first off he's the coolest clearly he, like, can do he's, the most he of his powers. He embraces it, too. And he's, like, the one who's, like, not going through, like, all... Yeah, he, like, enjoys it. He's like, look at what I can fucking do. This is some cool shit. <laughs> you know, going back and watching this, I'm buying Chris Evans more as Human Torch than I am Captain America. Yeah, and Geiger would definitely agree, I think. Yeah, I think you would too. As, and we, it, it as we said on the pod with Alex English, this is more his speed. This is more his speed. By the way, he sent me a Snapchat today. The guy who plays Sebastian or whatever in, in Westworld, who we hated, was also in a Domino's pizza commercial. Oh my <laughs> god. So keep an eye out for that because it's airing right now. You'll probably see it again. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll say this, Yon Gruffled, while not a great actor and has not gotten many roles past this, he looks exactly like Reed Richards. He does. Like, it's kind of freaking me out. It's actually even more in um, Rise of the Silver Surfer when they give him more gray. He has the gray strips in his hair. Yeah. Um, th yeah, they did, a, they did a great job with that. God, this CGI is so fucking bad. It's really bad, man. And the only reason I say that is, like, if you're going to do a movie like this with the demands of CGI... But you have to have the technology be th there to do it, you know? And it's just not. Do you think this movie was ahead of its time? I think it was behind its time, if that makes sense. Like, they tried to do things that technology couldn't do. Like, the very first Tron movie, the one in the 80s, yeah. never should have even been attempted to be made. And it, I'm not saying but this is if, on... But if we didn't get that Tron movie, we would not have got Tron Legacy. Agreed. Which was... Fucking fantastic. Now, this movie shouldn't have been attempted to be made for a ton of other reasons besides the technology, but that's definitely part of it.
I think the fan- it's it sucks. Like the Fantastic Four, I th- I think has just kind of been cursed because you get this somehow by the grace of God they got a sequel and it was still terrible. Then they rush a n- another one in 2015 just to keep the rights. I mean that movie I had no idea they were making it on like till like nine months before it came out. Yeah. They and definitely I actually, rushed it. And I was actually excited because we got Michael B. Jordan. Um, yes. I actually like Jamie Bell, even though he did not have that big of a role as Ben Grimm. But in the first act, again, I loved what they were doing with him. And um, I was extremely afraid of how they had Susie Storm and Johnny Storm obviously being different races. They're supposed to be brother and sister. How they were going to attack that. And I thought they did it flawlessly. Yeah, that I was great. It. it was fantastic. You, you felt Johnny Storm's kind of animosity towards his dad for him having the uh, the favoritism of Susie Storm being adopted. Yeah, that and was great. It that was fantastic. Really I really loved it. Um, I haven't – I'm not a big Fantastic Four comic person, just the Fantastic Four obviously in there when they team up with the Avengers and the X-Men and stuff like that. I, I've read those, but um, I don't know if that's a avenue that the, the comics have taken doesn't really matter. I bought it as a story. I think, and everybody sold it. I think that shows you how bad Joss Trank screwed the third act of that movie up because he had built and set up all the characters with the exception of Victor Von Doom with Toby Kebbell, who I still cannot believe that is not a character that they've cracked correctly on screen. But first off, why is this chick on the street in her underwear? You can't change? You don't have a robe? And does... Why does the thing think that he's fucking Raphael from the first Ninja Turtles movie? <laughs> That's exactly how he dresses. <laughs> yeah, like, I literally mean, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for him to shoot some sighs out. I'm waiting for Casey Jones to show up and they'll make a bunch yeah. of obscure sports references. Are they saving Megan Fox? Although the nice thing here, I bet is number one is Dick is bigger, and you know he has no as hard as a rock issues in the huh? bedroom. Huh? He can be as huh? drunk as humanly possible. Yo, Deb, why don't you lose your shit a little more? Or wait, you can't. That's a weird scene. Yeah. That was a really weird scene. I don't like I it. I mean, I kind of get what they were trying to do. Like, show that, hey, he's fucked up. But at the same time, like, is it necessary? You know, it's it's in- incredible to me how whenever necessary in a movie, a character can usually grab a trench coat and a fedora pretty easily. I mean, they're a dime a dozen. A dime a dozen. I've also read, and no surprise looking at this, the thing needed to be done digitally because, number one, this makeup looks like shit. And number two, I cannot imagine how long Michael Chiklis had to spend in the fucking makeup chair to do this. Oh, it sounds terrible. Like, I wonder if I can find it, the, the stat. I bet this was like five or six hours of makeup. Okay, this scene's pretty funny too, though. Yeah. I like how the subtitles just say muttering continues. Yeah. Okay, so you can't call someone a fruitcake this day and age. Yeah. That's Here's another thing that closer. frustrates me. Do you not realize that the guy is afraid of you? Like, stop running at him. This is another thing that's always annoyed me in movies. Everybody has the grip strength of, like, an MMA fighter or something. They can grab onto any cliff or ledge at any point. Yeah, it's incredible. That shot actually looked good. That shot It works looked very good. That and that was in works. the trailers. I remember that one. I was like, that's fucking awesome. 
And see now, inadvertently, Ben Grimm is going to kill 15 people. This is where the budget of this movie went, this fucking bridge scene. So is this the bridge scene that she almost fainted on? I guess so. No, she almost fainted on the space station scene. Oh, okay. She also probably almost fainted a lot because she didn't want to fucking be in this movie. Yeah. I'd be curious. I'm, I'm going to look this up real quick before I say anything. That's not really our style. We more just talk first, put our foot in our mouth. Wow. So, guess what the budget for this was? Don't look it up. 180. No, it's only 1 million. 1 million? Yeah. You mean 100 According million? According to IMDb. 100 million? That's what I said. You said 1 million. <laughs> I didn't say that. I bet they wish it was. It was it was oh. 100 million was the budget. Yeah, this guess scene what it, took guess 5 what the weeks box to office shoot. Got office was. According and this, again, this is according to Wikipedia. I we don't worldwide you know. I'll say 289. No, north of that. 450. South of that. 330. Oh, well, like, like this scene. Yeah, this scene took 5 weeks to shoot. I don't know why, but the the cop on the left there, I just saw uh, Gordon Levitt from The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Like I don't know why, but like real flash, I was like, "Holy shit, is that him?" Oh, I have a scene, a line that's not going to surprise you. This is according to IMDb trivia. Jessica Alba's underwear scene was added after the actress had agreed to be in the film. Oh yeah, does that surprise you? No. And another interesting fact, and this is was one of the ugliest parts of the C of the Josh Trank uh, reboot, but Jessica Alba dyed her hair blonde for this movie, but wore a blonde wig in the sequel. Unfortunately, the production crew had Kate Mara fucking do both in the Josh Trank movie because the reshoots where she has the wig on look atrocious. They're terrible. And I'm not the type of guy that can normally notice that, and it was distract. I'm not even kidding. I could not focus on the scene. Because her hair looks so bad. Well, and we talked we talked about that when they did the reshoots for um, was it Attack of the Clones? Yeah. When they did reshoots with Obi Wan, uh, Ewan McGregor. Yeah, he wore a wig in parts of it, and I couldn't tell the difference. No, we I couldn't watching. tell at all. In fact, I almost don't even believe that trivia because it looks so good, and we were looking for it. They're like such superheroes now. Yeah, but here's the other thing. I guess this is my main, and I guess this is before we really got the formula, quote-unquote. That dog was adorable. That, do oh, that dog's oh. the best actor in this fucking movie. Oh, jeez. And I guess this is before we got the formula right for the film, but, like, part of them uncovering themselves and who they are through their powers and part of the slow development and why you don't do this in the first 20 minutes is we don't really care until we know, like, why it's important in terms of the villain. Like right there's now, no stakes. Right, right now, now we know – yeah, there's no stakes. Right now we know Victor Von Doom sucks. And unfortunately no, – no. Right now there is no villain yet. Right. The, who, who, right now the Fantastic Four who have been heroes already for half the movie and we're 35, 40 minutes in, they're just being dicks. Like they're causing all this destruction. To a point you made earlier, Banner – about how the Fantastic Four in the comics, while maybe Marvel's oldest property, I believe. Uh, uh, one, I think, yeah, it's one, very, very close to that, yeah. But, and clearly, like, a lot of heroes have debuted in the Fantastic Four comics, even before they got their own. I've yep. never actually been as big a fan of them myself in the comics, and I know Geiger especially hasn't been. And I think the main reason is their dynamic is the least interesting to me. They're basically a family with one of their friends who were... I know that, like, the issue with them is that, oh, they had an accident and they become basically heroes, but it's really not that compelling to me. Well, and not only that, like, think about what you got. You got a smart scientist asshole, his wife, who he's a douche to, yeah, her really bad too. just asshole, asshole, douchey, doesn't give a fuck about anything brother and this misfit best friend that is basically along for the ride. 
Yeah. Like that's that's your four. It's just not. Now, having said One that, thing, I think a big thing about a lot of like superheroes is a lot of it's realistic. You know, if you look at Batman, it is realistic that his parents died. He went to this dark place, and now he wants to do good because of what happened to him in the past. You have um, Steve Rogers, this wimpy kid with the courage and the heart of anything. All he wants to do is serve his country. Goes and does this experiment, this this uh, experimental drug, basically becomes strong and and moves on. You know, Iron Man, the same thing. His parents die, blah blah blah. He's stuck in this Afghani cave. He comes out ahead. There's there's always this believable part to it. Fantastic Four don't really have that believable part, at least to my mind. And maybe that's just because I'm a millennial. I'm a little bit younger. Maybe back in the '60s when they debuted. It, it was different. But By the way, fucking ruthless. Stone cold yo, bitch yeah, move. Cold blooded. Women, they'll take your heart and then they take your bank account. And now Ben Grimm can't even. Geez, he can't pick sad. up their bank. Also, there's a lot of women out there thinking you just walked away from probably a 14 inch, constantly rock hard dick. What are you. Where are your priorities? Yeah, no. She, look, she's clearly not in her right mind. She's a lesbian, which is totally fine, but just be upfront about it. I bet the thing gets a lot of right swipes on his Tinder profile. Well, actually, oh. it depends. Is he over or under six feet? That's a really big deal to these types of girls. I think he's got it. Well, I think, I think under. his trait in this movie is under. I think he's actually over. He said, wear your ears. <laughs> the thing that See? sucks is Chickless, because of the nature of the thing, like, he has to fucking be in this makeup the entire rest of the movie. Yeah. Oh, and that's how they get their name. What a convenient plot device. This fucking yeah. Oprah gave it to them. Or what are we, some kind of Fantastic Four? What are we, some kind of Fantastic Four, Rise of the Surfer, and the next one... If Will Smith was in this movie, this would be the fucking part where he would say the title of the film. Did you see on our Suicide Squad, which, by the way, you guys should go check out our Suicide Squad uh, extended cut review. Uh, but, Hornacek, did you see the uh, the description that we put for that? No. What was it? Yeah, you gotta go check it out. On YouTube or iTunes? Because you should check YouTube. it out on both. All right. Yeah, yeah, definitely our listeners, go check it out on everything. Listen to us, subscribe to us, talk to us, comment to us, hang yell, out with us, be our friends. I'm starting to encourage yelling at us more. I don't... Look, be assholes. We deserve it. Let's we be do. honest with we're, ourselves. We're not good people. No. We're sitting here watching Fantastic Four on a, what is it, Wednesday evening? It is. And it's never a good time to do this, but it is a Wednesday evening. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you at home, it says uh, something to the effects of, the bros discuss the extended cut of Suicide Squad. What do we look like? Some sort of bro force squad? Which is Will Smith's go-to move. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of what he does. Chris Evans like, and now, body shots. See, I'm just buying him as this, like, crazy party kid. Yeah, he definitely has the clap. Oh, for sure. Yeah, by the way, is it not the most typical thing? Any villain has to have black leather gloves, with which he removes in probably about a third of his scenes in the respective film. Yeah, of course. I'm just shocked that, like, They're pulling nobody... out Victor's like, what's that mean? 
I'm shocked that, that they can't get Victor Von Doom right. Like, he is one of the best villains in the, the Marvel universe. He's the biggest and, view villain in Marvel. I don't think there's yeah. very much argument with that. And it just, it sucks. It sucks that Marvel was in a place where they had to do something, and obviously they sold the rights. So that, that was what it was, but it sucks that they can't do something to get them back and actually do Victor Von Doom right. You know, give this movie credit because I but, think Marvel... But is Victor Von Doom in Thor Ragnarok? Or no, 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 it's Infinity Wars. Yeah, Excuse me. we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. He might be in the back. He might be in the background of that, that picture. We'll see. And I think Marvel, when they saw this in 2005, were like, Jesus Christ, we need to make our own movies. Do you I know, think this movie sparked the MCU? Do you think we have the MCU because of Fantastic Four? Quite possibly. And the only reason I say that, I know Stan Lee was very upset about this film. This is the first time he really, like, was vocal. Because he loved Blade, and he loved the X-Men movies X -Men. up to this point, And it was the first Spider-Man. By the way, speak of Span Stan Lee, there's our man, the legend. Sorry, there's Stan the man himself. That's actually a decent cameo. Having his, I forgot he was the mailman in this. But yeah, this was the. He actually spoke up and was. As, I mean, as I'm not. He didn't like bash the film, but I think no, he's the Godfather. Like it, every, it, he could say whatever he wants. It's tough if you make this movie and then you watch Fox use it to wipe their ass, or you make these characters and then watch Fox. I think if I were him, I would be more offended that like. Obviously, what Marvel Studios and even Fox to an extent, like I know that in recent years the the X Men franchise hasn't been great, but then, like, what the fuck is Fox doing with this? Is his baby? Like, this is what started Marvel Studios. This is one of his first things in Fantastic Four, and they're just shitting on it. Like, they rushed a reboot, and what what do they buy? Like four years or five years now with the reboot. Yeah, I think so they just have to put one... I think it's seven for some reason. Seven? I think they just have to... Well, whatever it is, it's the pretty much the exact time between Silver Surfer and this. What did that come out in, 2008? That came out in 2007, so that's two years. Sorry, I meant between Silver Surfer and the Josh Trank reboot. Cause the oh, reason so 2007 to 2015. So what is that? Carry the one... Is that eight years? But, you know... They're, they're, the thing that I heard was that the, all they had to do was have the movie in production. So mm, so probably seven. I think it is seven, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But also they can bullshit, quote-unquote, in production. I mean... Oh, we've, now, we've now, is seen... that like production-production or could like does pre-production count? Yeah, that's I think pre-production counts. If pre-production counts, then that's bullshit because I've been in pre-production of my Adam and Eve movie for like... Ten years now. I, but by the way, I think we need to rework the script on that. Look, I, I agree. I agree. Like, if Emma Stone would just agree to play Eve, we'd She's be okay. She's not gonna call you back, dude. Like, and crying on the voicemail is not gonna help. Me back. She's gonna call me back. Crying on the voicemail is not something that women respond to. So that's your mom. I will. No, I'm, no, I'm serious. She's very sweet. When I called her crying about Emma Stone not calling me, she was very consoling, and it was nice. By the way, women out there, explain this to me. Von Doom shows interest in Sue Storm. Actually wants to help her. Yes, he's a little bit thirsty, but he can't get the time of day. Reed Richards doesn't give a shit about her, and that's the guy that she's willing to, to drop trowel for. I mean, it's like, what are we supposed she, to do? I think they like hard to get. Plus, again, and I hate to make the motif of this commentary penises, but with Reed Richards' skill, like, you got to think she's like, I'm a little curious. Does that, yeah, is that Elastic Eyes too? It's got to be, right? <laughs> There's no way everything but his dick can do that. I'm pretty... Never mind. We're not going there. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole, no doubt. He's really bad. It's all bad. And you know what? I'll say this. The dialogue there was not dog shit. Like, they could have made that work. 
his delivery was really bad. He might be the only one, though, that I'm like, he did a really bad job. Everybody else, I'm not going to say they did a good job, but they didn't do a really bad job. And that's what does, that's what's really confusing about this movie, is that you could tell he, like, totally punched, like, a curtain right there. Yeah, but he uh, fucked that curtain up. I mean, look, that curtain had it coming. See, this CGI isn't that bad. You know what that looks like? When I was a kid and I would, like, get, like, the leaked HBO and try to watch, like, real sex at night, that's what it would kind of look like, but in black and white. Yeah. Like, it's all kind of fuzzy still? Yeah. That's what Johnny yeah. Storm looks like. I thought that was a choker that Sue Storm had. I was going to say, you know what that means. Was it not? I think it was a stethoscope. Same thing. Oh. Yeah, I don't understand the difference. The actually, the whole dialogue of this movie is pretty funny. Like, it's not bad at all. Yeah. Like, they have, they're have they serious when they have to be, and there's some pretty good comedy in it. Does Ben Grimm, the thing, say it's clobbering time in this movie? He has to, right? I, um, he has to. Like, I don't specifically remember to say, like, yes, he does, but he has to. It'd be funny if Johnny Storm said that when he was about to bang Maria Menounos. It's clobbering time. He might have. Now, what are we expecting to happen here? I don't believe that a chair would explode that way. Can I just say this? This is a scene, like, I understand they have to do it. It's kind of exposition. But this is killing an already bad movie dead in the middle of it. If they hadn't done the other stuff already, this, like, this, I could buy this. We already know that he can, I don't know, we already know that he can turn into a flame, and we already know that Ben Grimm is a rock. It's kind of funny seeing him with the fire extinguisher shit on him. I'm telling you, Chris Evans, I cannot believe I'm about to say this, he might be the best actor in this movie. No, 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 let me rephrase that. Not the best actor in this movie. He did the best job in this movie. I mean, who is the best actor in this movie, then? Kerry Washington, who hasn't shown up yet? Probably. Menounos? Menounos, what a gem. Look, I'm just telling you, when I go and see a shitty movie in theaters and she's the highlight of the movie... I'm cool with it. And you know, at the time, we didn't know we had Maria Menounos on our hands. That's true. That's true. This was, shit, what, 11 years ago? This movie, this movie's almost like a, where are they now? See, the fact that this Reed Richards would not agree to move in with this Sue Storm is just asinine. You think, Johnny? Mm -hmm. What is the uh, helicopter skyline shot budget for this fucking movie? That's like the only way they know how to transition scenes. I'm actually impressed with the amount of CGI that they have in this movie for 2005 that they only had a $100 million budget. Like, that's why it's so shitty. God, I just, it, it sucks, man, because Doctor Doom... He's you know, such a badass. Just ass, the potential man. of him in every, in every different Honestly, type of story. Honestly, if we had Doombots in this movie, I would forget that this movie was shitty all the way around and go, we have Doombots, it's not that bad. Yeah. Although, 
Here's the thing. To hope for anything like that in this film, you know, just inherently they would have fucked it up somehow. Yeah. I, I took a second there to try and prove you wrong, but I, I couldn't. Tim Story did his best job, maybe, but I don't know. He's just not a good director. Can I just say that? Is he? I mean, you can say it. He's a I'm, huge I'm, fan of the pod, and I hate to insult him. But he's look, not good. Tim, for, come, why don't you come on the pod and defend yourself, please? Yeah, look, what I, I should take that back. I don't mean he's not a good director, but he's not good for genre film. Stick to the ride-alongs. He's actually per, er, uh, directed several music videos as well. I don't know if you knew that. Really? He did a yeah. He did a in '98. He did a Tubac music video. Are you still down? Um, Are you he's asking done me, or is that the name Tyrese. of the video? Okay. Do what? He did a Tyrese video. He's done several Tyrese videos. Wow, him and Tyrese have good rapport. They're boys. I'd hang out with Tyrese. For sure I'd hang out with Tyrese. I mean, he wants nothing to do with you, but... He also did an NSYNC uh, music video. Which one, does it say? I Drive Myself Crazy. Oh, that's a, that's like a ballad. Wow. Yeah. What's Ben Grimm drinking here? It. Absinthe? Maybe a maybe a, a purple Hulk. Is that like that's like Hennessy and grape juice? Yeah, that's de that's what he drinks. I drink, drink. We're getting cranked tonight. Speaking of drink, drink, I'm gonna get a refill real quick. Okay, I'm gonna need it for speed. the last fifty minutes. Yeah, for sure. See, I also don't buy, like, the, I don't know, the, the publicity and, like, the, the, I just don't buy any of this, to be honest with you. Like, oh, hey, look, she lost all her clothes and she's naked now because she can go invisible. I don't know. Is he now, making I do his... believe Ben Grimm just making orange juice and drinking it out of a bowl, just out of an entire bag of orange juice. Because if you be, turn into a human rock, the first thing you're going to do is make a fucking fruit salad. Look, Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm's dynamic in this movie is fucking great. It's funny. It's it's hilarious. If anything actually. works, it's that. It is. And another thing, I know, I know, uh, Geiger coined this on uh, our Rogue One review. Uh, Banner scores the score. Yeah. Not a bad score. At all, actually. It's. I'm not gonna say that it's fantastic i mean when you consider like what the composer's looking at when he writes the score like if you go outside and make me watch two squirrels like fucking humping each other it's going to be tough for me to come up with a compelling score to put behind it so yes let's actually let's do a little research now and i'm going to look up unless you already have it who composed this film i i, I actually have it here and i've got some some good stuff for you it's it's let's john go. ottoman and uh he's done He's done like, a lot of good stuff. Uh, as recently as Valkyrie, uh, he did Orphan. He did uh, X Men: Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, um, okay. which are both pretty. I good like scores. the Apocalypse score. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he did very, very well. And with what he was working with, he he did a good job. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, let's see, he did the Cable Guy. He did the music for Cable Guy. Cable guy. Lake Placid. He did Lake Placid. Um, is this a montage? Yeah, it is. Okay, wow. I have a, another really interesting piece of trivia that would have changed the course of history. IMDb says that Hugh Jackman was offered the role of Reed Richards. Oh my god. Thank god he didn't take it. Can you imagine if the roles were reversed? Jesus, No. Well, nothing would be the way it was today. Not only would the Fantastic Four be god awful, but so would X Men. X Men wouldn't have even been a. How do they do that? Because he was already Wolverine. Yeah, I don't know. It would not have made any sense. Like, that doesn't make sense because, first off, that's Fox and Fox. Yeah, so maybe that's not true. That? I don't know. Unless that was like a way pre production, like early, early. Fantastic Four was, you know, in, in 96, they were trying to get this off the ground. 
I mean, if this movie took nine years to come to, to develop, we have some serious problems. Look, we know I'm the Fox guy, but it it's possible. Look at him acting the shit out of this right now. Acting. God, this is just bad. It's so interesting. Ooh, and now look at the palette change to go to the much dark muted colors in a parking garage. That's just awful cinematography. And I know nothing about that, but if I notice something like this, then you've done a poor job. Like, this looks like Daredevil, the Netflix series right now. I thought we switched over. I was hoping. Netflix called an audible. Yeah. I actually saw, this is completely off topic, but I saw, like, one of the the memes or maymays or memes or whatever the fuck you want to call it, depending on your, uh, your dialect. Um, saw a thing that said it had a picture of like Buzz and Woody. And then it said Netflix Buzz and Woody and dude, Buzz and Woody look like fucking badasses. Have you seen that? I'll, uh, no. I'll see if I can find it and post it on our Facebook. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. And I would totally watch the shit out of that. It's almost like a, uh, Whoa, you're uh, dead. Like a like a cowboys cowboys and aliens, except better with Buzz and Woody. It was cool. I love Buzz and Woody. Those are my dudes. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for Toy Story Four. Not as excited as I am though for Incredibles Two. How fucking incredible is that going to be? See what I did there? That movie just took forever to come out. I'm glad it's finally happening. Yeah, I'm really glad that they took their time with it because pretty much from day one that Incredibles came out, which I think is actually around this time too, 2005. Damn, 2005 was a good year for movies. What else we got? In 2005? Yeah. I don't know. I'll look it up. Let's do it. Look up summer of 05 or even just the year of 05. This was uh, this is an IMDb trivia fact. This is the third superhero movie to be released in 2005. There was this, Elektra, and then not, not even close to the best film of the summer, Batman Begins. I could have swore X2 was that movie t that year too. Maybe X2 came out the summer before cuz X-Men was 2000. Maybe I find it was. Out, I find it hard to believe. Was yeah, I find it hard to believe they wait five years. It might have been. Yeah, it might have been up then. Little so ghost, here ghost Rider are reference maybe highest right there? grossing films in 2005. Did Damn. ESPN get a cut of this? I'm sure. For the X Games? Um, so here are your highest grossing films in 2005. Obviously, number one, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Right. Here's a number two that might surprise you. Might not. I'm going to give you three guesses, and it's actually very relevant to what's going on in pop culture right now, or just what's going on right now in, in the movie industry. Second highest grossing film of 2005? Yeah, 2005. Which I actually forgot this movie came out in 2005. Is it a superhero movie? No, but it is a movie that's relevant to the Bro 4 Squad. Revenge of the Sith. Yes, Revenge of the Sith. It was the huh. second highest grossing movie in 2005. Third is Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay. Fourth is War of the Worlds. Wow. So Batman Begins wasn't even in the top four? Uh, it's not even in the top five. King Kong is next. Wow. Madagascar is next. Jesus. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is after that. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is eighth. Batman Begins is ninth, and Hitch is ten. So, does it go any further past that? Because Elektra and... It was a bad summer for Fox, because they had Elektra and this movie come out, which were both, obviously, complete ass. And neither yeah, of them... Yeah, technically, going with Fox, they, they did have um, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, and they also had Mr. and Mrs. Smith, mm. um, which, rest in peace, Angelina and Brad. Brad Jelena, yeah, it's They're, over. Yeah, their their uh, relationship is now over. Summer sixteen kills some shit. See, this stuff's awful. Like this, like it's completely on the nose. Like, yeah, it's rough for sure. 
Let's see. And like here. how they get their names, none of it is like organic at all. He just like says it in an interview. Let's be honest though. What is he? I don't know. He's a thing. What is she? Invisible girl? And who's that? Mr. Fantastic? That's the other thing that's is, really tough to translate. Like, their, their names and everything are so dated. It's like... Yeah. Assault on Precinct 13. That was a, that's oh, wow. a pretty good movie. By the way, how did that Johnny already get a new vanity plate for his car? This has only happened to them like a month ago. Hey. I got nothing for you. Again, with the captions, onlookers gasp. Uh-oh, friends are going to fight. Oh, my God, guys. This actually don't. might be when he says it's clobbering time. What if? What if he did? Mulan 2 also came out in 2005, guys. That was straight to video, though. Um, still came out in 2005. Miss Congeniality 2, that was 2005. Oh. Sin City was 2005. That's another Jessica Damn. Alba. Sahara, we referenced that earlier with our boy McConaughey. See, now we're getting into the summer here. Revenge of the Sith. The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, of course. Twentieth Century Fox this is another trivia fact. And tell me how this even makes sense. 20th Century Fox hired director Tim Story after his ensemble work on Barbershop and Barbershop 2 back in business. That's what got him this gig? Really? Barbershop. Okay. Well, I mean, they translate. Clearly. See, her hair looks like a wig right now. I know it's not. Is it? No, it's not a wig. It, you don't think that's a wig? That might be a wig. Well, I read that it was dyed for this movie, but I could be wrong. Maybe there's a few scenes. Yeah, she does have pretty roots right now. This is what this movie has led us to talk about, is her roots. <clears throat> Of course, Doctor Doom, we don't get to see the cool stuff, him killing everyone. Scene opens with these guys already dead. Did you ever see the movie Chicken Little? I did. It's been quite a while, though. I actually really liked that movie. That came out in 05 as well. Nice. There was also a movie called Fuck that came out in 2005. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> November 7th of 2005, a film called Fuck came out. Can you click and like hear the it's description? A, oh, for sure. I'm going. I'm. I'm investigating right now. This summer, fuck. That that looked like Vince Young at that table. Oh five. Kerry Washington. Did he just win the? Did he just win the national championship in 05? Oh, it could be him. I don't know. He probably started in Texas. It's like a movie about freedom of speech. Um, oh, of course. It's a documentary. Yeah, it's it's actually Get over nothing. Yourself. Nothing that sounds cool to us. There's Kerry Washington. She plays Alicia Masters, who is the daughter of Vernon Masters, who is Taskmaster. Mm hmm. I actually kind of like this relationship this dynamic see I, I know i say this more often than i should but 
there's a good movie somewhere in here. Oh God! You know that's your thing. That's that's the Brian Banner. Like, let me see if I can somehow I mean, use science to get an use an equation to fix this. But this movie, there's not one here. I don't think. I mean, I know I've been drinking. I, I understand that. But there's there's a good movie somewhere here. I mean, this is teaching us teaching moments. Yeah, about, like, don't hire Tim Story to direct your fucking superhero movie. We're learning. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie Washington really hasn't aged a day. No, I mean, she's probably aged, like, one day at a time. True, true. This is what we're talking about. This is this is awful. Yeah, it's cringeworthy. That guy does not look much better than the thing. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, here's Latveria. I don't think I ever actually put two and two together and like realize that he is in Latveria. So that's that like mask is supposed to be like an award. Fucking creepy ass culture, man. This is weird. Guarantee he's got one of these in like Sue's bedroom or something. Yeah, either that or Johnny Storm's bedroom. You know what? That's the play. Why see just That's... one chick when you can see like a different one every night? Anytime anybody's like in a diner and it's raining outside and it's nighttime, it always makes me want like pie. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm talking about? Buy him high. If Victor's picking up the tab, sure, have a seat. Yeah, okay, you want to kill all my friends. I'll take the cheeseburger. I'm going to get bacon on it, because like, it's you. Wow, Jessica Alba, what is up? Yeah, she's... Full court press right here. Seriously. And I'm turning the ball over. Full court press. Unreal. And see, I don't get it. He's just not having it. Like, if I were him, I just... You're just pushing everything off the fucking desk and saying... This is me. This is who I am. I I'm ready to go. Let's forget the tests and let's drink a Smirnoff ice each. Yeah, but not the pomegranate one because that one's nasty. I mean, if she, whatever she wants, she gets. If she likes that, then... I actually haven't had a Smirnoff ice since the last time I struck out in slow pitch softball. That's the rule. If you strike out in slow pitch softball, you, you get iced and you iced. have to... Get on one knee and drink a Smirnoff ice before the next batter gets a hit. Damn. So do you bring Smirnoff ices to the game? Well, I don't because I don't strike out. But you just told the story of a time you did. No, no, that was that that wasn't me. That was actually that was actually our legal counsel, Ronnie Cycli. Oh, okay. Yeah. That guy is a connoisseur of icing. He – actually, I can't lie. He, he doesn't strike out very often. He makes great contact. You know who is striking out? Tim Story in directing Tim this Story. movie. Tim Story, yes. Now we're back to the diner. We've got a full stack of pancakes and he's fit a polish. Not mad about that. Shake. You think that's a chocolate or – no, it's got to be like – he's probably drinking like a banana shake right there, right? I really want uh, a fucking short stack right now. I was just about to say I'm feeling some pancakes now. Like, like, we're at the point now where I've drank enough to where I'm ready to go get something to eat. If Tim Story did anything in this movie, it's sell us on the benefits of pancakes. Yeah. Mrs. Banner actually made me some delicious chocolate chip pancakes this weekend. Wow. It was phenomenal. I love chocolate chip pancakes. Way more than I love this movie. Yeah. I like chocolate chip pan chocolate chip pancakes. Put some strawberries on there with a little bit of whipped cream. Oh yeah. Now you're talking about I'm not I'm not a big syrup guy. 
I don't like syrup. It's sticky. It gets everywhere. Not a big fan of that. It's like sand. It's coarse and it's rough and it gets everywhere. Oh. You you reference sand being coarse and rough just as much as I reference Rise of the Silver Surfer. Yep. See, now, I'll say this. i got to give credit where credit's due. I actually kind of like this dynamic because it's true. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, there's a good movie somewhere in here. That's why I'm, I'm asking, was, was this movie ahead of its time? Let's say this movie came out even in 2010 where the bar has been set with the Dark Knight series and we have um, MCU has been created now. We have the X-Men trilogy has already been out. Do you think that with a slightly different cast, a better director – that this movie could have been something with this dialogue, even keep this dialogue. Uh, I'll say yes, but there's just so it's a reluctant. Much, I can see that. It's just so reluctant. campy. I don't know. This is a tough story to get right in general. I'll say that. Now, the landscape of superhero movies now this could never exist. It wouldn't even be tried to be no. made. Like, because Josh Trank's version, while well, he got the first third of it right, whenever you have to actually pull the narrative through and, like, see a climax with these characters, the whole thing just falls apart. So, I, I compare this a lot to Captain America, the first Avenger. The origin story of Captain America is a very rough origin story. It's a very tough story to tell. Just like Fantastic Four, their origin story is very tough to tell. Now, when you when you go past that and you start looking at their adventures after they're already the Fantastic Four, right. just like like Captain America after he's already Captain America, that's when their their stories get interesting and, and things like that. Like the Fantastic Four in the Civil War arc is fantastic. They they get split in half. Some of them are on Cap's side, some of them are on Iron Man's side. It's a very interesting dynamic. And that's just like Civil War, or, or excuse me, just like the Captain America trilogy. First Avenger is by far the weakest. And then it's up in the air whether Winter Soldier or Civil War is better, but those are stories after your origin story. And your origin story is very hard to tell, just like with the Fantastic Four. I think if they would have just kind of like what they did with the Incredible Hulk, they just kind of go in the opening credits – this is how the Hulk became the Hulk. I love And they that. go on with the story. I think the, this, that would have made a great Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, you got to do go one of two ways. You have to either do that or you have to go the route of what Geiger would prefer, where the entire movie is basically setting up their origin. This movie did neither. Yeah, this is, this is rough. It gave us a very hollow, hey, they're fucking heroes now. Do you get it? And I'm like, I guess. Like, it's, it's not even bad enough to be, like, funny, you know? Yeah, this is not, like, Batman and Robin funny, comical. Now, I'm sure if we had a little bit of Geiger's insight to this, it it might be a little bit funnier. But even then, like, Geiger can only do so much to, to something like this. Yeah. And Jessica Alba's doing her best to save this movie, and it's kind of working. I mean, I'm not mad about it, if that's what you're asking. Jesus, can you type any louder? Yeah. Thank you. Has that thing on her chin always been there? Is that Reed Richards the semen? I'm sorry, I missed it. Probably. Is he fixed? No? Oh, it's worse. Oh. When is he not watching them? It's a little odd. Yeah, it's a little creepy. He's... It's actually really creepy.
This Leonard guy, man, he just gets put in a locker this whole fucking movie. He's your breakout star. Where were the roles for him after this? Jesus, his agent should be fired on principle. He's no Scott Boris. No, you got a golden goose. Fucking have him lay some eggs. Like, what is the lighting here? I understand you want him to be in the dark, but it's like, it's just so try hard. Yeah, it's very 80s. But not the cool stuff about the 80s. Like the lame no. shit. Or the cocaine. What? If some coke showed up, this would actually get kind of interesting. Can you imagine the thing on coke? Then it's clobbering time. <laughs> then it's clobbering time. <laughs> Just acting the shit out of this again. And again, we're trying to CGI something we're not actually capable of. Like, this is... Oh, my God. This is like... What, what is the budget? See, and that's why I think it's... it's is it possibly ahead of its time? When you say ahead of its time, like, it's just bad. I don't... <laughs> It's not no, like this like, did something that movies in the future did. No, but a movie in the future could do this, is what I'm saying. But on the concern, Chris Evans to the rescue. This is when he turns into Captain America. Seeing Michael Ch- picturing Michael Chiklis as Captain America, that's something that will LOL you. <laughs> Like how you said L O L U. Like literally laugh out loud. This is one of those things, kind of like the Hulk. Like, I don't understand. Like, he didn't have pants, I don't and now get he has either. pants. Yeah, we're like, just the same pants. No, it's one size fits all. It sucks because that trench coat, that's what the chicks were lining up for, and now it doesn't even fucking fit him. Yeah, well, and it, it doesn't work without the hat. Chickless is awful. I just have to say it. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah. It's tough to say he's the worst when it's just they're all bad. Well, he just got bitch slapped. He did. He got he got fucked up. Can you believe that Fox made this movie their their early July movie? It came out July eighth, oh five. I mean it was a rough summer for them. I mean, obviously they had Star Wars, but Lucasfilm gets a huge cut of that because Fox is just the distributor. Yeah, they're just the distributor. That CGI wasn't awful. No, there's... That looked There's some stuff that's not too bad. That wasn't too good either. That was actually really bad. Again, with the grip strength. Like, everybody has enormous grip strength in movies I don't know if you've ever tried to like jump and just grab onto something but it is not easy no I typically like once a week will do the hang from the edge of a building yeah but you're one of those weirdos that does parkour now what the fuck did Jimmy do like why is he getting thrown out of the door look he just he got in the way
The makeup in this, I don't know. It just it looks like a, a mid nineties. Looks like the mask. <laughs> yeah. I do like Von Doom's like mask yeah. here, the helmet that they that he's about to put on. I do too. They, they did a really good job with that. I think I, in I general really like Victor Von Doom looks fucking awesome in the comics. I would love to see like a cool version of that. Not like the Crash Dummies one that Josh Trank did. This one, like Strictly talking about looks, I could fuck with this one that they did. Yeah. There's just nothing, though, like seeing Von Doom with the red, or with the uh, green hood. There's just nothing like it. Now he's That's like... That's one of those just... I, now he's Jigsaw all of a sudden? I see what you did there. So I don't get it, like, making him super cold, like... So that he breaks. Oh, uh, instead of being elasticity. What? Let's see. I... English? I didn't use words. Jessica Alba, that these crop tops are getting lower and lower. Yeah, she's. I I actually really like this Von Doom. Now that we actually see him with the mask, the darker green hood, and everything. Oh, it's kind, heat now Reed Richards kind of looked like um, Mr. Freeze right there. That that was a little rough. It's kind of a cool line. Yeah. Again, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Chris Evans might be, might be one of the better actors in this. You're not selling it to me the way you're even presenting it. I, I don't. That's because I'm. I'm not even selling it to myself. But <laughs> this might be one of his better performances. It's crazy, like, how polar opposite this character is from Captain America. Yeah. And I, I, again, I think he sells this character much better. That may just be me. Um, I know, I know we, we shit on Chris Evans quite a bit. Um, but he was actually in a movie in, came out in 2013. It's called Snowpiercer. Yep, saw very it. Very good. With yeah, Jamie Bell, good. who plays the thing in the Josh Trank Fantastic Four. Yes, yes. I actually forgot he was in it. And Tilda so Swinton, who is the ancient one. Mm-hmm. Lots of Marvel ties. This is kind of a, maybe the Iron Man with the nuke scene was sort of an homage to this scene. Although I don't know why you would pay homage to this movie at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't think it was an homage to it at all. I think it's just, this is what we did. That was smart. That was a smart move. Look, nobody said Chris Evans wasn't smart. I think a problem with villains in movies in general is they, like, see an explosion and he just fucking assumes, like, oh, that guy's dead. Like, he's not, though. I can see that. Can you imagine some of the role-playing stuff you could do with the Invisible Woman in the bedroom? Oh, trust me. I know. How do you know? That's the device, right? He's, like, turning him back. It's kind of a I good like how he's like, Susan, look, this is so us. That's like, like when your mom calls you by fine. your full name, Susan. Yeah. I kind of hate, too, how, like, they never show them, like, practicing and learning their skills. Like, how is she all of a sudden good at shooting the force field and becoming invisible you know like she can just do that at will now and johnny can all like of a sudden yeah he's just like 
Yeah, like Johnny can all of a sudden they're, turn into this flame ball and like shit like that. They're all Mary Sue's. Oh, his triumphant return, there which we is. feel is nothing it? about. Yep. Because he wasn't the thing for Go eight seconds. It's clobber time. That's the thing. All their lines like flame on and it's clobbering time just are just cringeworthy now. Yeah, but I still love them. I flame on. Yeah, that's a little cringeworthy. It's clobbering time. That's not. That's that's classic. Oh, shit. This guy's just trying to bang his 10-cent hooker that he has in his room. Look, it's a Christmas party. It's just what he's trying to do. Him and Leanne both know that what happens at the Christmas party stays, stays. at the Christmas party. He's like, look, that's a 200 bottle of Crystal. Ben groans. <laughs> What's equally what are the bad, odds that they land in a trash truck like that? Good. I'd say very good. I think what, something that's almost just as bad as the movie are the non-dialogue subtitles on this. And by bad, you mean the best part. Like how they've described a lot of these scenes. You've been like, what? I will say that once Doom is Doom, I, I'm, I buy it. Like is that there, scene right there. Is there anyone in the history of time who you we've gotten less out of in terms of production than uh, beat cops in any superhero movie? Like the, <laughs> they're just absolute paper mache. All right, I'll ask you this. Where on, of all the Marvel movies, doesn't matter, Fox, Sony, uh, Marvel Studios, where does this Victor Von Doom rate in the villains? Pretty low. You think? Yeah. I mean, I mean, number I one, the actor, is, the actor is not that good. No, I'm not talking about... I'm just talking about as Doom himself. Not... Not... Victor Doom or Victor Von Doom, like pre before he becomes Doctor Doom. Okay, well, last place is obviously the Mandarin. Yeah, I believe all. No, no discussion. Whiplash there. is pretty fucking bad too. Geiger loves Whiplash. He's probably like middle of the road. Dr. Doom is? I think he's middle of, the, middle of the pack for sure. Yeah. See here they set Sandman up like... Sandman is really bad in the third uh, Spider-Man. Sandman is horrendous. And the only thing that made him worse was how they tried to retcon him being a part of Uncle Ben dying. Yeah, and it made him... What made him worse is that he wasn't that bad because of how they portrayed Venom. With Eddie Brock and Topher Jesus, Grace and yeah. all that shit. That I forgot was just... about that. I thought we agreed that was bad. This, like, the concept of this is cool, though, like, them finally working together as a team. It's, like, a necessary way to round out this movie. I'm telling you, there's a good movie somewhere in here. I know you hate it, but I'm right. All right, that was a little corny. It was a lot of corny, but that's what this movie is. I mean, Tim's story... It, it, he did, could not pull off the magic that he had in Barbershop 2 back in business.
this is one of those moments where I'm like, this is so bad. <laughs> Anytime people use a fire hydrant as a weapon in movies, I just ha- instinctively laugh. I don't know why. Yeah, like... It... It's like a ninja knowing your environment. What if his eyes just like all of a sudden moved right there? Like he's he's all frozen, but only his eyes can move. Do you think Johnny Storm has like a separate burner phone just for all the chicks that he bangs? Like this is my life phone, okay? My family has it. I use it to make business calls. This one is specifically for, you know, skanks that I meet out on the road. Yeah, he's clearly got a burner phone for this. I think it's a good investment. I will say this just about Marvel in general. How fucked up does New York City get all the fucking time? Oh, they absolutely shit all over it. Is she in the second one, Carrie Washington? Yeah, she's actually a pretty big part. I'm pretty sure they actually get married in the second one, or at least engaged. That sounds right. There's your body shots. Is he wearing Nikes? Yeah, dude, those are fresh. He's getting laid tonight, bro. It's no oh, question. sure he is. What is this part? Is this party because they won? I don't. Uh. Or is it yeah, like someone's like? Birthday, bar, bar mitzvah? Maybe? I don't know. Are they on a boat? It's a party boat, definitely. It's a booze like, cruise. Have some fun. Oh, no, there we go. Make out with Look, a three international in the waters. We do what we want. Is she giving? Is he giving her a male ring? There's no diamond on that. She's got to say no. Look, Brian, he doesn't have the money now. Okay, he's good for it. If you're lucky, then you should have put a ring on it. If you love it, then you should have put a ring on it. It actually looks more like a lug nut than anything else. <laughs> it does look like a lug nut. Nothing says I love you more than, look, I care about you so much that I took an important fucking piece out of my car's engine to give to you. I could die next time I drive that thing. And nothing says yes more than the fact that, hey, I'm going to say yes and let you give this to me. But I'm going to turn invisible first. What does she, she turns invisible when she gets like nervous or horny or what's the deal? Or she's on her period? The above, maybe? Okay. I don't get. What are they doing? Oh, he's it's spell, just their thing. He's it's gonna their spell banter. something out, isn't he? That's my guess. And I don't remember this, so if I'm way yeah, off. I don't remember this either. Oh, it's the four like the fantastic. Do you I get, get it? Because it. it's like their team. Yeah, because like there's four of them, and like that's their thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got to be going to Latveria now, right? He's going somewhere. Yeah, he's got to be going to Latveria. That's one thing that, like, they didn't reference at all. Like, they, he's from Latveria, and, like, that's his place. Oh, no, there, there's no Wi-Fi. No, that's... That Yo, can't why is there. Leonard on this fucking shipping freighter? It makes no sense. Did you just do, like, a shiver, like, sense of storms coming... Doom's roll on the second one, I remember it being small and feeling, like, really stupid. Yeah. Oh my god, it's over. 
Well, if you're still with us and alive, we did it, guys. What is wrong with you? You we're, need to go see psychi we're psychiatric help. We, you need psychiatric help. But we're not the guys to subscribe it to you. We're like brothers in arms now. When you go through something like that together, you're always closer because of it. We'll always have this together. So if you listen to the Bro4 Squad before, of course, we're still glad to have you. But the main thing we like to do after these movie commentaries is something really fucking stupid and fun that usually makes fun of the movie. So Banner and I decided we are going to put together a team that we call the Fantastic Boar, which is this movie was awful and horrendous, but could we somehow cast the team and the villain worse in any... My God, I think we can. I think we can too. Now these are going to get... I'm going to apologize up front. We, we have a, There's one that we disagree on, but I think they're both equally awful. So let's go through I've it right now. I've got a secret one that we didn't discuss. Yeah. Oh, you do? I do, yeah. Okay, great. We love a good bombshell dropped. So let's start off with Sue Storm, the thing. Jessica Alba played her with no charisma, no personality. I think we can equal that, but also get someone less hot. And that would be to cast Malin Ackerman, who is from Couples Retreat and The Heartbreak Kid and a few other things. The only reason I'm casting Malin Ackerman is she has shown she will get naked in literally anything. It could be a Doritos commercial and she'll just show up topless. Like, oh, was this not necessary? But also she can't act. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, next, next on the list here is... We're going to go with Sue Storm's little brother, maybe older brother. I'm not sure. I think it's a little brother. I feel like he's a little John, brother. John, I think he's a little brother. He's, he's definitely more immature brother. We'll go well, with that. With this casting choice, he is definitely a little brother. He's a fucking midget. Yeah. Johnny Storm, we're going to go Seth Green. <laughs> now, this podcast famously likes to make fun of Seth Green because he's fucking awful. Um... I believe in our Batman and Robin commentary, someone had him as, like, Robin or something. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. I try not to remember when we did that commentary because uh, it's such a bad fucking movie. Basically, Seth Green as Johnny Storm is literally the biggest joke. It, even for this movie, Tim, that's where Tim's story would have drawn the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need actual fucking Joel actors. Schumacher wouldn't have even, even cast him in something like this. Yeah, that says something. Second, and this is where we're both going to have a good uh, casting choice. Who's going to play the thing? How do you top Michael Chiklis's hollow and shallow performance as Ben Grimm? I'm going to go, and I don't even know this actor's name, and I don't fucking care, so I'm not going to look it up. But I'm going to go with Kevin from The Office as Ben Grimm and the thing. Hey, Reed. <laughs> it's that's, Robin time. That's a very good one. He can I'm spill gonna... his big tub of chili on Doctor Doom in the climax. <laughs> that's I his weakness is chili I am not going to disagree with you but I'm definitely not going to agree with you this is a shout out to Ronnie Cycli I'm going to go with Goldberg from D2 as the thing wow the only other thing that I've ever seen the actor who played Goldberg in was a random episode of the King of Queens and yep. he looked like he had eaten enough to be the thing that's all I'll say He's also in the Fat the what's the Fat Camp movie? What the fuck is that? Heavyweights. Called? Heavyweights. Yes, he's also in Heavyweights. Yeah. So, let's save Reed Richards for last cuz I think that's one of our best casts ones. I'm going to say Pierce Brosnan as Doctor Doom and here's why. Pierce Brosnan was great in Goldeneye. Besides that, he's a horrendous actor who's very full of himself and to me number 1 that's Dr. Doom, and since he can't act, if he can just fucking play himself, we should be good, right? I disagree wholeheartedly. Wow. Being that this is the summer of 2005... He's white hot, you're right. White hot, you know where I'm going, Hayden Christensen. <laughs> he had another movie come out that summer, where's the time, Brian? Doesn't matter, look, he's a Jedi... One of the most powerful Sith Lords. He can do them both. You better just pray to God that no one walks up to Doctor Doom with a bucket of sand. Because he fucking hates it. Because it's coarse. And it's rough. 
and it gets everywhere. In all seriousness, though, you need a terrible actor that will overact the shit out of everything. That's true. And and who does that better than Hayden Christensen? Actually, let's be honest. Because they were around the same time, I wonder if Hayden Christensen was reading for Johnny Storm. Like, legitimately. I wonder if he had auditions. He might have been reading for Johnny Storm. Yeah, it, He just it, has it, no it personality. Like, he could not play that role. Yeah. And finally, and last but not least, of course, Dr. Reed Richards. Genius, brilliant scientist. This one was a layup. Just a little too easy. We're going to go with Wesley Snipes. Oh my god, you guys are racist at home. Of course he can play Reed Richards. Why couldn't he? The man has talent oozing out of every orifice in his body. He, and at this point, he still was out of jail because he still wasn't paying taxes. I was going to say, I think the only problem would be if he's in prison during the time we're filming this. But as we've already figured out with Geiger on the commentary for episode one with Jake Lloyd, just bring in a green screen. The be seat, fine. We're fine. If the prison guards are cool with it, which bring them a fucking casserole, sweep it under the rug. Everybody's happy. Look, it's fine. So that is our fantastic boar cast. Boo. <laughs> Guys, that's all we have. We are the Bro Four Squad. Thank I'm you. Spent. We're all spent. We're exhausted from watching that Tim Story piece of shit. We're really glad you guys stuck with us. I can't believe we decided that. Like we should have done Santa Claus. <laughs> we should have. But there's still time. Another day. Yeah. Another day. We're the Bro4 Squad. We love you guys listening to us. Go like us on Facebook, Bro4 Squad. It's three words. Same on iTunes and YouTube. Subscribe to us on both places. Follow us on Twitter, at Bro4 Squad. Check out our website, bro4squad.com. Check out our squad blog. Email us, bro4squad at gmail.com. Yell at us. Laugh with us. Make fun of us. We're the Bro Four Squad for Brian Banner, the mad scientist. I am Jeff Hornacek. Thank you guys, and we'll catch you next time.